Okay, so welcome to another tying video. Uh, today I'm going to be tying something that's uh, a bit of a more traditional, uh, it's an old pattern is what it is. The idea came from uh, reading a book, Kispiox River Journal, I happened to be reading, and it was kind of neat reading, you know, you see all these record fish in there and they're being caught on these really old patterns. And uh, they're quite small, and um, you know, right now we've got low clear water and uh, there's still lots of guys out there chucking big huge intruders because um, it's just what we've kind of gone into this go bigger go bigger and I thought well maybe it'd be neat to kind of see some of these uh, older patterns tied up again and so this is called a Skiomish uh, Sunrise so a uh, pattern developed by uh, Ken and uh, George McLeod and in uh, 1955 George actually caught the, um, the world record at the time on that, on the Kispiox River. 29 pounds, 2 ounces. And later on, the one that everybody is aware of, the uh, Carl Moser's um, 33 pound in 1962 was caught on a fly. Very, very similar to that. So we've got in the vise, we've got a Umqua U203 in a size 6. Uh, it's quite a nice uh, inexpensive hook actually. These come in a pack of uh, 50. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them maybe is the straight eye but uh, quite a nice shape otherwise. Kind of neat the pack comes with this little magnet strip on them too. Uh, I got some Vivas thread in uh, red 6 aught. Probably don't need anything quite this uh, heavy but it's what I have the, the red thread in. Uh, Vivas also comes uh, this Vivas thread, by the way, is amazing thread. If you haven't used it, really super strong, even for the, the sizes. Uh, I probably use 10 aught the most, but this uh, 14 aught in, in white, I quite like for if you're going to do uh, married wing or classic sort of style flies. It's nice because it doesn't build up a lot of bulk, but it's still fairly strong. So anyways, we've got the 6 aught thread in there. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> do up a little bit of a tail. So the tail on this is a mix of yellow and red hackle fibers and I've got a nice uh, Chinese cock cape. Um, this one happens to be by uh, Superfly. Good company if you haven't uh, bought their stuff. Decent quality, reasonable prices. Uh, never really been disappointed with their, uh, their stuff. Always seems to be pretty good. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, some hackle fibers for the uh, the tail on this. So just take your fibers, pull them out 90 degrees to the stem, grab hold of them, pull them off. That should keep your tips all nicely lined up. I'm going to do the same with some yellow. So the tail is a mixture of red and yellow hackle fibers. So we'll do the same thing with some yellow. I'm not too worried about the tips lining up perfectly. And I generally try and use a few more reds than I do yellows just because yellow is a more dominant color. And then I'll just uh, snip off the any webby bits that I may have come along from the uh, the stem. Then just take them, sort of twirl them in your in your fingers if you feel adept doing that. You can also kind of just uh, clump them on to is another way. So length of the tail we're looking about length of the body. So just a little bit past the hook bend basically. Looks pretty good to me there. And this is going to be a chenille bodied fly. Remember I was saying these are older patterns so yes we're going to be using chenille so don't worry too much about keeping it super clean uh, underbody. Uh, we're going to have a rib on this fly. It's a silver tinsel rib. So when I do this, I like to tie it the side I want to be using down. So this is going to be a silver rib. In this material, of course, silver on one side, uh, gold on the other side. So I'm going to tie it silver side down. When I do my first turn, that'll flip over and it will be silver side up. 
So we'll catch that in, tie it in the way back down. And then we will tie in our chenille. <coughs> so chenille, a lot of people haven't even, a lot of new tires haven't worked with this. Um, just because, well, it's kind of considered old fashioned. Go figure, we're tying an old pattern and we're using it. So one thing you can do if you don't want to build up quite the bulk with your chenille is if you just take your thumb and finger and give it a pinch and pull you see there, we've exposed the core and that just gives us a nice thin tie-in point so that we don't build up too much bulk in the fly. So bring your thread forward a little bit and we're going to pull this back. Now <clears throat> the wing for this particular fly is um, either white bucktail or uh, in this case I'm going to be using uh, polar bear hair. Uh, I've got this polar bear, uh, if you get the chance to use it, it's a really nice fiber, it's very translucent in the water, really pops. Uh, this particular piece, uh, again, it's uh, super fly. We had these, uh, they called them assortments, but there was some that were natural and they were just this nice big huge uh, piece of polar bear in the pack. The rest of the packs, the assortments were, you know, little bits and bobs of uh, red, green, fuchsia, whatever, what have you. Um, but there was some of these that were just this nice big patch of natural, which is great for tying these old patterns, skunks, a number of different things. I thought I might even try my hand at uh, dyeing up a bit of this stuff. Now, of course, I've lost my scissors. There we go. So, um, if you haven't worked with polar bear before, the one thing that's not as nice about it is it is very slippery. So we're going to grab the tips um, well, pull out all of your under fur. So if you just go ahead and tie this in as a normal wing, you're going to find if you don't put some glue or really wrap it down tight, it's going to pull out pretty easily. So I like to tie these in um, reverse style. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure it like that. So what we're looking for, length of the wing, uh, about the back of the hook is what we're going to want ultimately. So we measure it like that, pinch it with our fingers where we're going to want that to be. And once we've got that figured, we're actually going to tie it in backwards. So we're tied in facing forwards. And we tie that in at this sort of point on the fly. And the reason we do that is when we get to the front of the fly, we're all done everything else, we're going to fold this back over on itself and finish the fly off that way. It makes for an extremely durable fly and a really well tied in wing. Um, still want to wax your thread. Like I said, this is slippery stuff. Trim it down. And you can even, if you want, at this point, you can um, put on a little bit of uh, head cement before you go any further. But I'm just going to cinch that down well, make sure it doesn't spin. So really, we've got this nice strong thread. Might as well use it. Crank down on that. Make sure well tied in and bring your thread back up to the front. Still leave some room. We are going to put on a red and a yellow hackle here as well too. So Now we're going to take our chenille. Bring it forward, touching turns. Cross your thread couple good solid turns on there. If you want to, you can do the same thing here then that we did with the when we first tied it in. Cut it off a tiny bit longer than you would need to. Pinch off the last bit of fluff. Tie in the core. Okay, and then we're going to bring forward our rib. See that first turn? Flips over to silver. One, two, oops. 
Uh, the joys of live video. Okay, one, two, three and a bit ribs ought to be sufficient. Trim that off. Tidy up a bit. You wax your thread again. And now we're going to do our, our front hackle. So as I said, uh, we're going to use a yellow and a red hackle. And I'm going to go yellow on the bottom, red on the top. Just because again, that yellow is the more dominant color. So we'll select a nice hackle from our cape. <clears throat> I'm going to pick something that's probably a little longer than you would normally like. Give it almost a bit of a, it's not a spade-like appearance, but a, a nice long flowing hackle anyways. Uh, we're going to tie this in by the tip. I like to fold, often end up folding the tip back just to give it that little bit of extra security and then bend or snip off your, your hackle. Now I tend to just kind of stroke these back. You can fold them with your scissors too, a lot of people do that. So I just kind of wet my fingers a little bit, stroke them back. One. I'm sure you need enough room for the red. Two, three. You can actually tie them both in at the same time too. You get a little bit of a different effect that way. Kind of more of a mixed look as opposed to this layered look that I'm going to end up with. And a couple fibers running forward. Just tie them in like that. And then move it to the back. Okay, your red hackle. Um, it's maybe a little webby for for what I want on this fly. I think there's not a lot left in what I have in saddle that's long and. Not webby. Use this one. And just hang on to this uh, bottom fluff part. We're going to use that in another, another video here, another old tying one for a tail. You can actually kind of use it like a marabou, basically, tail. Okay. Tie that in by the tip as well. Same thing, stroke your fibers back, fold them as you go. And the beauty of doing the red last as well in my opinion is you can kind of gauge how the mix is going on the colors and wrap enough red on that you're happy with the mix that you get. Looks pretty good to me. A couple of wraps. Scoop that off. Let's pull everything back. One or two wraps just to tidy up that tie-in point. And I've probably crowded my head a little bit. But basically, you can take your thumbnail, work that polar bear back a little bit. There's some short fibers in there. I'm just gonna snip. Make sure you got a good pinch on it and bring your thread over the top. End up with a little bit 
larger head this way but like I said I think especially for a fishing fly the advantage is in the durability you end up with an extremely durable fly you can see there there's no way that's going to pull out with it being folded back in on itself now we just whip finish one, two, three and you can also snip off, I've got a couple little tiny short bits of bullet air that got left there finish that off with some head cement and you're good to go now that's probably a little fuller than they would have tied it in terms of the length of the hackle from what I've seen in, in books and but I still think that's that's kind of, you know, each tire's personal preference. It's one of the nice things about tying. So there you go, the Skiomish Sunrise. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Try it in some uh, low water, clear days, and uh, see how you make out with it.